Right guys, uh, so the question that we're going to do today is from the DCG Solutions Workbook and it's on question 3 on page 131 and what you have to do is it says the graphic shows a plastic pipe which consists of two intersecting cylinders. We've got obviously a cylinder here, a cylinder A, so we can see the obviously representation of them here and it says complete the given projections and draw the surface development of the section A here. So what we have to do is we have to complete the elevation up here plan has been fully completed already and what we have to do is we have to develop out conical surface A. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do now is just explain a little bit on how we're going to do that. First of all, when it comes to cylinders, what we always need with, with, with cylinders and we're doing developments is the generators because without those generators, we're not going to be able to develop out the surface. And for this surface here, this surface A here that's going to intersect into this surface, we need to see obviously the intersection points. And the only place we can see those intersection points is actually in plan. We can see obviously where it's cutting into it here, all along here, around to the front as well, as we look at it in this direction. As we're looking in it, it in this direction, we'd see it obviously on this side here. And what we have to do is we need those generators and where those generators are that are running all along this face here, they're going to tell us basically where it's going to cut in along here and how we're going to basically develop out or sorry complete the elevation up here and to be able to do that there's two ways we could do it we could take well there's a couple of ways we could do it you could take an auxiliary view here of section a of the cylindrical surface imagine if we're looking in straight at it at this angle perpendicular to it got the face here and we're looking perpendicular to it and what that uh, shape will then see is going to be a circle here that's the shape you'd see when you look straight at the face of it Another way you could do it is down here. Obviously, we have another circle. You could do a semicircle and generate the generators that way as well. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an auxiliary view because I've got a perfect 36 degree angle here. So I'm going to just do very quickly an auxiliary view. Set up an X1, Y1. And after I do that, set up the X1, Y1. Nice and easy there. X1, Y1. And after I do the X1, Y1, I'm going to complete the auxiliary view. And as I said, we are going to see a circle. Very simple. Now, we know it's a circle and we know the radius is going to be from here to here. So I could literally just mark that anywhere and do it. But for all intents and purposes, I'll do it uh, the way it probably you're used to doing it in class. And the way you're used to doing it in class is you're used to measuring down from the X, Y line pick it here let's say I'll pick it here actually down to the middle and that distance there you would then step it out here like that now that's actually going too far out on my page so what I will actually do is I'm just going to take the radius which is from here to here I'm going to mark that out center there and draw in my auxiliary. Nice and simple. There we go. Auxiliary view of it done. And after we do the auxiliary, now what we're going to actually do is we are going to complete the generators. And the generators are essentially going to be split it up into 60, 30. So just get it going this way. And after this, after that, then it's very important on how we label it. So I'm just going to complete the generators there now. So to complete the generators, it's just a little bit of sliding set squares. So I'll set up my 45 underneath it. Parallel to that edge, slide it down out the way. I'm going to use my 3060 then. Okay, now at this point it's extremely, extremely important in how we label it and recognize our labels. Okay, so if I just start with this top point here, this top point here is a generator that's obviously running down along the face of it, kind of into it. So if I start with that one with number one, that means that this line here is my number one generator. 
So that's my number one. Then if this one would be two, three, so on, four, Twelve. Back to one. Okay. So all of those are generators that are running around along the face of it. And as I said, we had one here. So down here at the bottom, this one would be corresponding with number seven, and so on. So what I have to do is just bring all of those back along it. Essentially, I'm drawing in those generators. As we see, we can we have drawn in a series of generators there. However, it's just important to recognize where or what is where. Okay. Now, we've got one, two, three, all the way around to twelve, back to one, and seven was down here and one was up here. Now, as we can see, we've got two here and twelve, which are running all along this generator right here. Okay. Now, it's just a case of how do we recognize which side two two is on, which side twelve is on. Okay. Now. To do that, so in this position here, I know, to be honest, two, as I'm looking at this face here, forget about the auxiliary now for a second, as I'm looking at this face here, one is here, so I'll put one up here, and then on this side of it, the face that I can see, because obviously we know we're going to have some form of a intersection in here like this, we don't know exactly what it is yet, but on this side, the side we can see, which is over here, because remember we're looking in this direction, at it. So this side we can see. The back of it is going to be the exact same as it, only we obviously just can't see the back of it. But it's going to be the exact same. And it's just a case then, is 2 at the back or is it at the front or is 12 at the back or is it at the front? How do we recognise that? And what we have to imagine is, remember, we took an auxiliary view looking at it, remember, perpendicular to the face of it. That means 12 is actually down along here at the front of it. 1 is going to be up here, it's the shortest part, 12 is going to be somewhere along here, and then 11, and then maybe 9 or 10 or whatever it is at the outside. So, take 10 and 4 for example. They're obviously, if 1 is at the top, 7 is at the bottom, 10 and 4 are going to be in the middle. So 10 and 4 are actually going to be either here or here. Now which one is 10 and which one is 4? Now, remember, this is the left hand side of it. This is the right hand side of it as we look at the cylindrical surface A. Left hand side, right hand side. As we're looking right now, that is the left hand side, that's the right hand side. So when we're looking at this direction, this is the left, this is the right. So that means that this side will be number four, which is the back, and then this side is number 10, which is the front, okay? So number four is at the back, number 10 is at the front. So that's why I know 10 and all them, all these numbers are actually the ones that I see on this side, if that makes sense. And all these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, until it gets to the bottom at 7, are all going to be along the back edge, along there. Okay? So I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Alright? So what I have to do now is, I actually just have to split it up. So if I've got my generators up here, I need to find those intersection points. And to be able to find those intersection points, I need to be able to find them down here as well. So what we can actually do at that point is we can take the widths here. Okay? So just to work out that, as I said, my top generator, which is the 1, is going to intersect in there. And it's cutting, obviously, at this point. So that's my number 1 there. If I just actually put that in. That one generator going from here to here will match with this and this, just to prove it to you. So, that's matching up perfectly with that. And this point here, this point right here, is going to match up with that guy. Now, it's just a case of finding where 2 is, where 3 is, where 4 is, and so on. So, if I, as I said, if we took the distance from the middle out to 4, well, that's actually that distance there. We already have it. 
Now, to find the generators for 3 and 11, 5 and 9, because they're all the same distance. There we go. So I'm going to take that distance. Let's get it accurately on my compass. So that's 3. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just literally mark it on a line that I already have. Above and below. And then I'm going to also do the same with the distance from the middle to 2. Because that distance there is the same as that one, as it is that one, as it is that one. And there we go. Now, they are my generator lines. Just to be able to put them in. And once again, numbers. So, if I actually just think, oh, well, number properly. Bring them out to the front and the back so we can kind of imagine how it's going to look. Okay, and I'll split him right in the middle as well. Okay, so as I said, that was one. Then follow it down. So as I said, on the outside going around this way is going to be along here. So if that's one, then this one is two. This point here is three. This point here is four. This point here is five, six, seven then obviously we're coming around to the front the side we can see eight nine ten and eleven and twelve if that makes sense so they're all just the generators but we can see two and six are on the same three and five are on the same line four is on its own one and seven are on the same we obviously just know one is on the top seven is on the bottom twelve and twelve and eight are on the same down here and four and nine are on the same ten is on its own if that makes sense. So the 10 generator cuts here, the 4 and 9 generators cut here, 12 and 8 cut here, the 1 cuts here, the 7 cuts here, the 2 and 6 cut here, the 3 and 5 cut here, and the 4 cuts here. So it's just basically the labeling which is really important so that we don't get confused on it. So if I wanted to find 1, which is up here, it's already been found actually. Seven has already been found because that's where it cuts there. So let's start with two, uh, two and twelve, which is going to be sorry, two and twelve, which is along this line. So let's think about it. The two one cuts right here. The twelve one cuts right here. And as we can see, they're both in the exact same position. But what I do is I bring them up, and we can see. Look, this is the twelve one where it hits there comes up, that's where it matches up. The 2 one is the exact same where it hits here, comes across where it hits here, comes up and matches, oh, sorry I'm getting confused, yeah, oh there we are, sorry apologies. So there's my 2, it's at the same height, so there's my 2, it's in the exact same position. So they're both in the exact same position. Now it's a case of finding, that was the 2 and the 12, okay, but it was also the 6 and the 8 because they're coming from the same line and they're both hitting at the same place so in that case I can also find 6 and 8 and 6 and 8 is down here okay because remember it's at the front and at the back and the numbers we're seeing at the front because when we look at it in this direction the direction of my pen we're going to see all of this all of this up to about halfway which is the middle line we're going to see all that okay and that's what we're seeing up here the numbers at the back two three four five six seven uh, all the way down to seven at the bottom even though we don't see them it doesn't mean they're not there it's just they happen to be in the exact same place so that's that one so now we've done two and six we've done eight and twelve now we have to do the next one so take this point right here this guy which is going to match up with this guy. So we just think of the numbers that it corresponds with. Make sure that's it up properly. There we go. Okay. Now, this one is 4 
and 9. So find 4 and 9. Uh, sorry, 11 and 9. My apologies. 11 and 9. So there's 11. And there's 9. Okay. So that one there was 11 and 9. And uh, also up here we had 3 and 5. And look, if we watch it up here, there's 5. So it was already ready found, but it's at the back. And 3. So it's at the back. And the last one then we obviously just have to find is, I think it's number 10 and number 4. And they're going to be in the exact same position. So once we bring them up, if we find it, see, 4, 10. And then it is simply just a case of free handy or curve. And usually at this point I'll do it in pencil first. Okay, that there then leads us to completing the elevation. Now at this point, we have to now complete the surface development of the section A, of the cylindrical part A, I should say, actually. There we go, elevation drawn, completed section A here. Now, what we have to do Actually, I'll just recap that one last bit. As I said, we took the end elevation here. So remember, generators, 2 and 12, but it's very important in just how we label. Because if you mess up, well, once we draw this, you can actually put in numbers. But if you mess up the numbers down here, then everything that comes with it up here will get confused. So it's very important to recognize that, the, as I said, the right-hand side here of this circle, we've got a circle. This is the left-hand side of the circle. All this from 1 this direction, that's all the left, this is all the right hand side. So when we look at it in this direction, remember it's still this face, I know we're seeing it as an ellipse down here, but it's still a circle, okay? And look, this was all the right, this was all the left. So just remember that, that is very important. Okay, now at this point we just have to complete the surface development of it. And what we do is, we need true lengths of the lines, and luckily enough in our case, we have a lot of the true lengths already got. So, because the true lengths are actually going to be all the generators. Because all our generators in the plan are parallel with the XY line. Look at the generator 4, which is this guy. He is parallel with the XY line. That means this length here is a true length. So, step that up. And number 1, I can step up. And I'm going to start it right about here. Straight away I can actually heavy in that one because that's my start point. That's my number one. Okay? And after that then, all we have to do is we have to develop out the surface. I should have zoomed out there, my apologies. So there, that's what I did. I just rotated it up. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the distance from one to two that distance there and step it out 12 times until I get back to 1. So if that's 1, this is 2, 3 and so on. 5, 6, 7, 12 back to 1. So watch my labels. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, back to 1. Because it has to finish at 1. In this case, it's just working out straight at 30 degrees up here. So I can heavy in that. And I can heavy in all of along this side here as well. And the reason I can heavy in that is because that's a circle, perfect circle at the top of it. So it is. I know we see it as an ellipse down here in plan, but that's just because it's tilted at an angle. 
but in reality we know that face generates a perfect circle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to step out all my generators at 30 degrees. So that will be two. Not exactly sure, but I'm just going to step them all out. Three, four. They might need to come out this far. Six, seven. I think the longest one is going to be ten, maybe. Yeah, ten and four. Okay, so very simple. At this point here, we have 2 and 12. So if we see that, we've got 12 and 2. Very important. 2 and 12. And it's touching right down here at this point. So at that point there, I'm going to bring up and where it cuts through the 2 and 12 generators, that's where it is. Now you wouldn't have to, you don't have to bring the line up the whole way. So there's the 12 one. There's the two one. If you wanted to do it this way, so I'll just show you here. If this is the three one, this is the eleven one, which are here and here. Or sorry, this point here, it's obviously at the front and the back. Here's my tree line, here's my eleven line. So three and eleven, as I said, I could literally just mark it like that and like that as well. Just make my marks. I might continue doing it that way, it keeps it neat and tidy. And I'll just keep going the lines. Now, at this point, I've got 4 and 10. So 4 and 10 are here. There's 10. And there is, I'll just mark them all inside. So I said that was my 3. That's 11. There's my 10. There's my 4. Now, this one is my 9 and my 5. So there's my 9. There's my five. And then the next guy here is my, he's actually on the same, it's working out the exact same, depending on our accuracy, which is my, f so nine, five, six, and eight. Nine and five, so I got six and eight. There we go. And then the very last one for me is my seven, which is down here. It's working out a little bit shorter. It's gotten a little bit tight inside here. So there's that one. And then it's a case of just freehanding in the curve. So. Just heavy that in. And there we go. That there is the surface development fully completed of uh, the cylindrical surface A. Okay, once again, labeling, indexing is extremely important here because it helps us develop this out. This could be developed out a much different way if you had just started maybe with the longest edge first completing in going into the middle. If it was the longest edge first, then you'd have a long edge going into a little bit something like that. It just depends how you take it. I always take it from the shortest go starting from the shortest, finishing at the shortest. Okay, question done.